entrepreneurs on Born the Brew. You are now listening to the Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney. Let's grow! Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast. I am your host, Adam McChesney, and I want to thank you for being here today. If you're listening, please be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. We would love for you to share this on social media by tagging me, and this way we can get this incredible content out to more people. Also tag our guests so that way they can get more exposure and continue to, to share their message with more people. Today, we have another great episode lined up for you. My guest and I originally met back in December at a BLN event in Washington, D.C., and then since then, we have stayed connected online, watching and supporting each other's journeys. He reached out, offering to be a guest on the podcast, and I took him up on the opportunity because he's got so much value to give and a great story behind that. My guest today is Matthew Brackett. He is a global leadership coach and founder of Brackett Alliance. Matthew, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share the microphone and screen with you and your 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 guests. Not only your guests, but your following, all your your audience. I appreciate that, man, and and excited to learn a little bit more about you. You know, obviously, I know we've connected for a brief time, seen a lot of what you're doing uh, online as well, and in love all that you have going on. So tell us a little bit. We like to start at, on the history side of things. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you come from, and walk us up to what you do today. Of course, small town, New England, the 10th of 13 children, which that's always a good icebreaker. Mm. 13 children from small town, New England. And at the age of um, 18, I did a volunteer year with a religious organization. And then that was during that time that I decided to go to seminary, which is a place where you get educated to become a minister, or in my case, to become a Catholic priest. So I was with what they would call a religious order. If you've heard of like the Jesuits, the Franciscan, the Dominican. So I was with an organization of that type. So it's a global organization. And that brought me, during that 30 years with them, that brought me to many, many um, countries and cultures. You know, I was 10 years in Italy, five years in Ireland, two years in Colombia, two years in Chile. And now um, we're calling in now for Mexico City. Mm. And... And then I was also a chaplain in the United States Navy, serving both sailors and Marines. So fascinating, you know, between the educa- education that we receive and 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 just in spirituality and in life of the spirit, and then also in theology and also in philosophy and classical humanities and and then postgraduate degrees and different things. So it's and then being able to visit so many cultures. And when you go as a minister, when you go to different countries, you you're not there as a tourist. You really become part of the fabric, which is also fascinating because you get to really know people and know cultures in, in a much deeper way mm. and, and learn languages along the way. So very, very fortunate. And as I look back on everything that I've been able to experience, that's in, in a very few words, that's a bit of my story. I transitioned out of formal ministry uh, two years ago. And I finished my time in active duty as a Navy chaplain. And then I also asked, I left um, my formal time as a Catholic priest and I started, I worked on a master's degree, which I've since finished in the psychology of leadership at Penn state. And I started my practice um, of coaching and education. I use the word education. It's really about public speaking and things like that. But for me, the term education is very important because it's about um, offering solid content and, and helping people understand themselves and to understand how to lead themselves and others better. Mm. And that's why I always say lead better, love better, and live better. Then there's the individual side of my practice, which is the individual coaching, especially geared towards people in leadership roles. And I believe very much in the one-on-one process, although it's time consuming and it takes a lot of energy, but it's, I, in my view, it's one of the most, one of the more transformational um, spaces that people can lean into. And it's not for everyone. It's not for every coach. Not every coach is comfortable in that. And not everyone has, I, I'm going to go out and link here. Not everyone has the courage to step into that one-on-one space because it's a vulnerable place and it's a place of honesty. And, but if you want to be transformed and really not only talk the talk, but you want to walk the walk, then that's one of the places that that happens. Love that. And thank you for sharing your backstory, just everything of all the travel and, and the work in the ministry and then and, and the Navy part of it as a chaplain all the way up until the leadership coaching. Got an interesting question for you, though. How many how many languages do you do you actually know and are able to, to speak? 
Right, we're just three. Okay. So it's a lot English, still. English, Spanish, and Italian. Okay. Um, well, Italian is a little bit out of practice when you don't practice something like anything and you you begin to lose it. So that happens. Yeah, that's awesome. I did, I did a lot of Latin, but Latin was never something that I enjoyed and not anything that I ever could speak. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'm sure that helps just as you're meeting people from all over the world as well. I mean, I'm sure that helped progress just being able to connect with others, understand cultures and things like that. So that's, that's phenomenal. Talk to us a little bit about obviously that transition. So you talk about, you know, being in the ministry for, for that long of a time, going mm -hmm. to multiple countries and living there for, for multiple years at a time, and then going into the leadership and coaching space. What was that transition like? It was very hard, <laughs> very challenging. It, it does. That's not something that happens. At least in my story, it's not something that happens from one day to the next. There's yeah. a, a long journey there of trying to understand. And I like to say the transitions come into our life. Transitions happen because of three things: um, because of pain, because of dreams, or because of love. Mm. And there are three powerful things that can cause transitions. I most of my life I think was caused by pain. Realizing that I wasn't in the right place and the right type of lifestyle and the right type of organization that was where I would flourish. Mm -hmm. So while I was very successful in so many ways and had so many wonderful experiences, there was this little nudging and little pain that began to grow and grow and grow. And I began feeling just living a lot in conflict with myself. Mm -hmm. And and then living in conflict with sort of my surroundings. When you live in conflict with yourself, then you begin to enter into conflict with everything around you. <laughs> and, and you kind of know that something's off, but you don't know what it is. So you try to make it work. Mm. As a lot of people do. We, we, we have this ability to sit in pain for a long time and to try to figure it out. Mm. So I, I decided to sit in, in that space for a longer time so that I would find the answers. Some people, because pain is a very hard thing for us as human beings, we want to ease the pain. Mm. Um, and we want to medicate it in some ways, which can be through some types of behaviors to try to medicate. It doesn't solve a deeper problem, but it can, set, you know, it can take the pain away at least momentarily. But then it comes back sometimes in a stronger way, right? That's where a lot of addictions come into play. The addictions come in oftentimes because it's a way to, to deal with some sort of mysterious pain that we're not confronting in a healthy way. Mm. And I'm not only talking about substance um, types of addictions, but there's all types of behaviors, mm. right? Which can be so. Without going a lot down that down that track or down that path, um, sometimes when we're in pain, we can make very emotional or impulsive decisions, um, which then you look back on and like, uh, what? Well, I wish I would have done that differently. Mm. So I, and I didn't want to have those regrets. So I, I sat and I, I would, there's a lot of things I didn't do right. Or, if, you know, as we look back, we always have, we can see better. But I am, I like to acknowledge the fact that I was able to do my due diligence and do a lot of work on myself in that process. So then I came to greater clarity so that when I came time for the formal transition, I think I was at a great place in life. Mm. And it was, my decision was coming from a place of really of contentment and happiness and clarity. Because mm. um, I had worked through all the pain. Um, it just took a number of years to do that and a lot of uh, intentional effort. So that's, in, but when if that being said, the, those two, you know, two days when I received my, um, my separation from the military and my, also my, what they call dispensation from formal ministry, uh, they were, they were two hard days because I, I was all my security. I, I left my security nets, right? Mm. I was on my own for the first time in 30 years and with nothing to go back to. So it was, it was just, and, and there was a lot of um, a great sense of insecurity. So I knew why I did it and I knew what my, where I was going and I'd still put a lot of things in place to be able to go there, but it still never made that moment easy of, of fears and insecurities that I experienced. Yeah. Yeah. Had the, had the back against the wall with, with no safety net able to catch you if something happened. Sorry. <laughs> so, I, 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 as for, you know, for us as human beings, and we security is very important for us. So it makes, that's why a lot of people take a while to make decisions mm. because, um, 
sometimes the, we're happier with the known, even if we don't like it, than with the unknown. Yeah. I love what you talked about, about just like sitting in the pain and not trying to rush out of that pain. Because I think so often times as entrepreneurs, we want to solve, or really just anybody, I guess, it's not even just entrepreneurs, we want to solve whatever the problem is, right? And some problems are meant to be solved immediately. And some other problems, you have to have the experience of knowing what that pain is like. So that way, you know, not to go back there. And mm -hmm. you have to come to the own conclusion or your own clarity of like, hey, what am I trying to do next? Because I think a lot of people, they'll shift from one thing to the next thing just to get out of that pain or get out of that temporary spot. And then they're, you know, six months or a year or two years later, they're in the exact same spot because they just went to that next thing to escape that temporary pain. Mm -hmm. Right. Love yes. that. That's hard. You know, and as an entrepreneur, it's more like, you know, there's a lot of insecurities. You know, if you're not doing well in one lane, you're like, well, mm -hmm. do I stick it out and see it, try to make it work? Or do I go to these other, <laughs> this other garden that looks a lot better, right? And then you go there and then you're like, oh no, <laughs> it's the same thing. Nice. So it's, it is hard, but I think pain and I, in my own story, I talk about befriending pain because mm -hmm. pain, it teaches us a lot about ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree with you there. So the next question I have for you, we talk about ingredients in the beer brewing process um, mm -hmm. as far as the, the entrepreneurial journey goes. What are three key ingredients that have made you successful in your journey thus far? Yes. That's our, I, now I consider success, I'm going to give you my view on success. Um, I think success is a journey. Mm -hmm. And I think when we get to the end of our life, that's only when, when that puzzle is finally put together. Can we say that in general terms that my life was a success? Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we put together piece by piece. I think if we get caught up with um, passing successes, then we can, sometimes we can get off track. Mm. And this can happen with people. So success, I see it as a journey, as a puzzle that we're putting together throughout our whole life, and we have our whole life to put it together. And, and but I think with three things that come to mind when you ask that question, and one is to always have the big picture in mind. Mm. Hard for us as human beings because we can get caught up in the intricates and the, and the other things, especially the pain points. They become all they can really involve us and, and all be all consuming, um, and we can forget the bigger picture. So, it's just in big picture the big picture in our own lives, the big picture in our relationships, the big picture in what we're trying to do professionally, right? And also, I think we're going back to the thing of success is it's really the how we define success because some people put themselves under all these pressures of of perhaps erroneous definitions of success. And so it's very important for each person to gain clarity around what success looks like mm. in their life. And oftentimes we can, our definition of success can be more of just comparison. Um, I have to be like that person if I want to be successful. Mm. It might not be accurate, right? And so, so the big picture. Secondly, something that's helped me I could tell you all about my things that didn't help me and all the, the messes I've made. But another one is intentionality, mm. being intentional. And I like the image that John Maxwell uses is that you never go uphill um, unintentionally. <laughs> right? Gravity pulls you down. Here we go. You can go downhill in, unintentionally, but you don't, you don't grow unintentionally. Okay. So, so intentionality in a lot of, my decisions, a lot of what I wanted to do, what I've done in intentionality. And you asked for three, didn't you? I did. Yes. The other third one is that's helped me be successful is my ability to care and my ability to connect with people. And I think I'm, I, I think it was even before ministry, I had a very caring heart. And that probably what drew me in some aspect to ministry. To, um, kindness, care, and connection. I love to connect with people. And, and I think that was, that serves me well in my present practice and, and the work that I do as well. And so, yes, caring and connecting is something that's helped me be successful. Mm, appreciate you sharing those key ingredients. And, and the next question that we're going to go into, which is something you kind of brought up before, is, is some of the mistakes. So 
Talk to us a little bit. You know, you talked obviously about some of the the successes and the key ingredients and all that stuff. But talk to us about some of the mistakes that you made along the way and and where the journey was more on the downs than just the highs, the highs. Right. <laughs> yes, and I think success is very linked to our mistakes mm-hmm. right, when we know how to leverage them. Mm. And so, what? Are the, oh boy, there's, there's a lot here, and it depends what angle you want to go at it from. I think even back to the mistakes for, you know, even my reasons to go into ministry um, were probably not the right reasons. Mm. Okay. Again, we have all of these unconscious motivators when we make decisions. And even, I'm not saying just about at a young age, even at older age, we don't necessarily pay attention to some of the unconscious or subconscious motivators that move us to, you know, we will say, well, I'm doing this because of this, this, but maybe there's something deeper here that's driving some decisions. So for me, it was, I think that I wanted to do something impactful. I wanted to make a difference. So there's a sort of like this transcendent nature or aspect in, in my drive. Um, my, because of my background, it was sort of, if I wanted to make a difference, I had to do something heroic and something that required a lot of sacrifice. Mm. And, and so this path looks like the one that was most heroic and most difficult and required the most sacrifice. So that must be what I'm supposed to do. So it was very obligation and duty driven, but it was also an escape. I think I wanted to get away from small town New England, even just from my family circles, because I, I wanted to discover myself. I, I think I, I grew up in a large family and, and I suppose I was, my images of me as a child is like, I, I felt like I wasn't seen or I was sort of lost in the mix. Mm. Now my siblings wouldn't say I'm a parent and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just saying about my own subjective experience. So part of it was I had a restless heart and I, I want to get out of here. <laughs> and so I thought that as my ticket out of there. So as you can see, none of those are, none of those motivations are speaking about, you know, this, sort of feeling this call to purpose and all that. So, so yes, not, made that decision prior for not the right reasons. They were the best reasons I had at that age. So that's one thing. Um, I was part of a dysfunctional organization for many years. And I think it's, I, while I was, I would say a prophetic voice or a, a voice um, that was calling for change in that amidst that does function. I still allowed it to influence me. And I think I made some leadership decisions with the way I dealt with situations that I would dealt with some people um, I'm not happy about. Um, I probably hurt some people in the, in the process of my ignorance or whatever it was, or just allowing myself to be sucked up by some dysfunctional behaviors of the organization. Mm-hmm. Although I tried consciously tried to fight against it, but I'm sure it, it it affected the way I made some decisions, the way I dealt with some situations. Um, so that's something that always hurts and to know that I made mistakes there, mistakes that, that hurt other people. Mm. Yeah. Um, those were, and then I, in the, going back to what I was saying before about how we deal with pain, there was some, I mean, I turned, you know, and then this is about saying what's right or what's wrong. I'm just saying what I turned towards, what I would consider disordered or dysfunctional behaviors to deal with my pain. Right. You know, in my own life, I, I made a vow of celibacy and chastity, right. But in that loneliness and crisis and confusion, well, I looked towards, towards pornography for some sort of comfort and consolation, right? which doesn't end up offering that. So it's, again, it's a distorted place to look for that, but you know, and then it just increases the guilt and the shame and it doesn't, Help, like I said, we, we use these substances or behaviors to say, and then it ends up leaving us um, worse off, right? And even getting into um, one or two illegitimate relations, you know, with, with, with females that I that I shouldn't have gotten into um, because of my commitments. Mm. I think it was all consensual and there was, there was nothing abusive about it, but it was just what it was abusive was towards myself. Mm. And then perhaps towards towards the female and, and giving hopes of something that really wasn't going to be mm. right. Yeah. And so I turn. So again, those are mistakes I made in the. And I think all mistakes you they're understandable in their context, but not excusable. But they but they can be understood better in, in that context. So those are definitely things that and some of the mistakes I made along the way, which were very hard, and. Um, 
and still are hard to and but I had support for me to talk about them. Yeah. To take them to keep up with them. No, and I appreciate it. Something that. else, another I think another thing, and I wouldn't call it a mistake, but something that I just didn't it was a muscle that I hadn't trained. Well I was always there to help and serve so many other people. When I went through my, you know, in the midst of my darkness and confusion and crisis, I didn't know how to reach out to someone. I didn't know, I think I had trust issues as well just because of what I've gone through. So I didn't know who I could trust. I didn't know how to do it, how to, how to talk about my stuff. And, and I had to learn. Mm. So I learned a lot in the process. And so that's where, you know, failures linked to um, working with them leads them to success. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that, especially just talking about kind of where you were able to take some of those lessons or mistakes and kind of turn them into learning opportunities. The one thing that I think a lot of people listening can resonate with is, especially people with a, a caring heart, as you mentioned, they always want to help other people first. They want to help other people mm-hmm. first, and then they don't know how to help themselves, or they forget to pour, you know, their cup full first, and you can't really make the biggest impact possible if you're, you know, running on fumes and and not happy yourself. So I think mm-hmm. you hit the head on the on the or the nail on the head there. Really appreciate you sharing that. Talk to us about the biggest lesson that you've learned that you would share with somebody that's in business or looking to get started in business. That you're like, hey, if you do this you'll save years worth of mistakes, headaches, loss of money, frustration. Yeah. So there, I want to preface this with sometimes people have to go through mistakes <laughs> and loss of money. It's just part of the, Always. But you, kind of want to, you want to help people avoid the bitter pill, right? <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> so we want to try to help them avoid it, but, but also we want to then walk with them when they're going through it. Mm. Mm-hmm. I do. That's a sort of just a comment to preface what I what I want to say now. And there's three words that come to mind when you ask that, and three words begin with P. One is purpose. Um, it's purpose and meaning is so important for us to see with human beings. When I would work, would work with the Marines, I would often talk about our M and M's meaning and motivation, right? And how uh, then, and we can lose those. But oftentimes we focus on motivation. Why am I not motivated? No, but the bigger question, the bigger picture is meaning what is meaningful to me and therefore and that's use the word purpose what's my purpose and purpose is also linked we could say it's linked to passion just like meaning is linked to motivation purpose is linked to passion and i think purpose is is the burning flame of passion mm. so uh, understanding our purpose and i with this i don't want to put people under a lot of pressure because there is a lot of pressure now you know what's your purpose what's your purpose and then people get all net nervous and tense and go into anxiety attacks because they don't know what they're we that's part of our life journey just like i said about success it's a journey i think finding our purpose is also something that we step into little by little right so don't stress but always remember, it is important for us because when we have purpose, it's sort of like that North Star that guides us in, in making our decisions and all our actions. And so it's something that fills the human heart. So and it might change, it might evolve over time, but purpose is very important. And then with purpose, priorities. And what are my priorities? And I see a lot of, you know, speaking to entrepreneurs or business people, and that's not only entrepreneurs, people in the, in the corporate sector and other sectors as well, is they sacrifice their priorities at the altar of success. Unintentionally, oftentimes. Mm. And, and that's always sad to see when what's most important to us ends up going by the wayside because either we were unaware, we were unconscious, we weren't intentional. So as you can see, I'm using, in all of this, we're using kind of going back, everything's linked around success, intentionality, big picture, right? Purpose, priorities, and then the other one is people. So purpose, priorities, and people. And people meaning that we, none of us can be successful on our own. None of us can build on our own. And in entrepreneurship, we learn so much from each other. Mm. And when we complement each other. But going back to what we were talking about as well is that I need people that I, I uh, there's people that I need to lean on and that I, it's important for me to trust, not only in, in the art of entrepreneurship or you know, the sector that you're working in, but going back to our personal stuff. 
And, you know, we have family, we have friends, we have peers, we have networking groups. But there's certain things that we go through and that it's very important to, to deal with in a whole different space where there's confidentiality, where there's respect, sacredness, and where that person in that space, which might be a therapist, might be a coach, where they hold your interests as the most, most at heart. Mm-hmm. Right? What your agenda is, what you need, what you're going to, they meet you where you're at, and they walk with you. And we all need that. And again, I go back to my own story where I had to discover that along the way. I was that for many other people that I had to learn how to put myself in that position. Right? And so people, and it goes again, about, you know, the people in my inner circles, who are the important people? Or it could be relationships, right? People, who are the important people in my entrepreneurship space or my professional space, right? And then in that personal, very personal space of who do I lean on? And it's, it's not a whole lot. It has to, you know, it's one, two, three people. And because if you go to too many people and it just ends up being more confusing, right? So who are those people, the intimate spaces that you lean on for your personal growth and where you can be most honest with yourself and deal with yourself? Mm. Love so it. that's it. Purpose, priorities, and people. Some great lessons right there. Purpose, priorities, and people. Go back and listen to that. That rewind that. Go back and listen to it. Take some nuggets from that. I learned a lot just from the overarching aspect of what I think a lot of us struggle with, as you mentioned, is that purpose. Thinking that we have to have it all figured out right now. And when, when people ask us what our purpose, if we don't know, or we're not 100% aligned with it, it does give us stress. It does give us that anxiety and then starts to to derail us. And I don't think it does. So I love the way that you explain that. And as we finish up the episode here today, we like to finish it up with talking about what's next. So you kind of talked to us about where you're at right now and kind of what got you here, but talk to us about some of the things you're working on right now and into the future. Yes. So thank you for that. So there's two types of things that I do in um, if you follow me on social media, you know, Matthew Brackett official on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn at Matthew Brackett or my website, Brackett Alliance, you can see some of the things that I'm doing for visibility and credibility sake, right? But there's two types of yourself. One is the individual coaching really geared towards people in, in leadership roles mm. and in your leadership roles, but whether it be entrepreneurs, whether it be in any sector, really political, faith-based, educational, any sector, because I take a very holistic approach to leadership. Don't ask me, you know, I, I'm not an expert in, in what you do, Adam. Mm. I, but my expertise lies in walking with you more in that personal space mm. around how you lead yourself, how you show up in positively in your inner circles and in your professional circles. And then a lot of, you know, with, I did a master's in the psychology of leadership at Penn State, which really gives me a lot more also solid, solid content. Because as you know, everyone talks about leadership, but oftentimes they don't know what, I know what they're talking about, right? Because <laughs> it means everything and nothing at the same time. So being able to offer solid content and, and research based on around what leadership is and how how it functions in, in the human element, whether it be on a personal level, or whether it be in organizational context, or also in leadership of teams. So um, so I'm there. I do a lot. Of, it's coach. I call it you know. It's coaching, consulting, and mentorship. And then there's the educational piece, what we call public speaking, right? And being able, whether it be conferences, speaking engagements, keynotes, workshops around a lot of different aspects of human development and management of the human element, either in ourselves or in those around us personally or professionally. So those are the things that I do. So I can, people can find me, you know, and I, there's a tool that I use one of many that I use uh, called the results accelerator, which is a very intense, but effective in, in the sh- in timely. because so it's very, it's a very short journey, but it really gets someone to a whole new level of clarity around their identity, their values, where they're going, what's getting in the way and what's helping them get to where they want to go. And it's a very visual process. And so that's one of the things that I use in my, in my coaching I also do a little bit of couples work as well because I'm very passionate about family and, and committed relationships. And so, and I use some very sophisticated assessments for that. And again, it's a very specific journey that I bring people on. Not so much about resolving the past and it's about what's our vision as a couple. Who do we want to be? How can we love better? Mm. And, 
and it's finding ways to for each individual in the relationship to see themselves to understand themselves better and to see their partner or their spouse better and that's why in my you know my work i always say lead better love better and live better and i say love not only because of relationships but i believe that leadership is love and love is leadership mm. some people can think of love as a very soft word right? but i think but when you it's a very strong word and powerful word and, and love requires a lot of sacrifice and sacrifice is the language of love and so when the leader loves he's going to care for their people he's going to see his people he's going to recognize he's going to listen to his people right and that's part of love but he's also going to have difficult conversations give difficult feedback because when you love you people that's what you do mm-hmm. and you're going to make difficult decisions but you're always going to do it from the right place yeah Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for coming on the episode today. Definitely learned a lot. I'm sure our audience is going to take away plenty from this. I know you briefly mentioned where people can find you online with social and websites, but can you say that one more time and then we'll put it in the show notes? Of course. Thank you, Adam. And bracketalliance.com is my website, which is always evolving. Uh, Instagram, Matthew Bracket Official, LinkedIn, Matthew Bracket. I think I'm on TikTok at Matthew Bracket Official. I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and on Facebook as well, Matthew Bracket Official. Awesome. So Bracket with double T. But thank you, Adam. Thank you for allowing me to share the microphone and your screen with your incredible audience. So good. Of course. It was great catching up with you and chatting. And again, to the audience, we'll put all that stuff in the show notes. So that way you can stay connected with Matthew and learn a little bit more about what he's doing and continue to follow his journey. I want to thank you again to the audience for tuning in today's podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share our content. Leaving a five-star review goes a long way. We'll see you all next week. And remember, entrepreneurs aren't born, they are brewed. I'm an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs who are born to prove. Thank you for listening to Entrepreneur Podcast with your host, Adam McChesney.